I, I like it when our, when, our, when our marriages go well. I want, our, I want our church to have good marriages. I want our church to have good marriages. I don't, I'm not going to condone bad marriages in the church anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a sin. A bad marriage is a sin. And um, a, a good marriage is of God. And um, it represents, if you, if you and your marriage are represent Tammy, if we in our marriage, we're representing Christ and the church, I should do everything in my power to make it good. And Tamara, you should do everything in your power to make it good. We should not have a bad marriage because of what we're representing. If we're representing ourselves, who cares? But we're representing Christ and the church. We're, we're Christ and the church from, from the Genesis. This is what it was about. Not just Christ and the church in present, but Christ and the church in future. So as far as you want to go into the future, we are representing something that is, um, that is very spiritual and lasting. And I don't think we should have a fight with Christ in the future. We shouldn't fight with Christ. And Christ should not fight with us. We should be one and grafted with him. But it, it is good to be in God's house today. And it is, it is, um, it, it is good to, to, to worship and to praise his name. Um, little, little Isaac heard that I was stressed. Because, you know, I, I, I'm a big kid at heart. and I, I don't want to have some poor kid being terrified of me, you know. And um, he heard that I was stressed. And so I was sitting around the back talking to somebody. And he came to look for me to tell me, it's okay, everything's all right, you know. Maybe his mom told him to or something like that. He just did. Uh, somebody did anyway. But he came around the corner. You did. Yeah, well, he, he thought that I was like collapsed over broken or something like that. Because it, the, the poor little guy came around the corner and he was so concerned. And I'm sitting down there and I heard this little tender voice cry out, Robert! But it was shaky. It was full of concern. It was... And, and Brother George, I, I said to myself, I wonder if that's how God calls us. When he, when he knows that we're hurting or he sees us hurting or when... when I wonder if that's how God would say... Because if, if a child can... And it touched my heart when he did it. Because I, I, could, I could hear the concern when you're hurting and you're, in, and you're, you're going through difficulty or, or you're going through difficulty and God says, you know, how? Because his heart is touched. And by the way, God's heart is touched. We have, we have, a, we have a high priest that can be touched. So whatever you're feeling, he actually does have an emotive response to you. And um, we're going to talk about it at some point. Um... But I want to talk on this topic tonight, um, this morning. It is morning, yes, that's right. <laughs> In Romans chapter 11, I did not intend to comment on the war in Gaza. I am not trying to comment on the war in Gaza. I am preaching on the scriptures. And um, my brother Andre, keep, keep, keep growing. We all love you. We all, you know. He, want, he would get baptized next week, but you know, I take my time to baptize people. We were supposed to do a Bible study on Thursday. I said, oh, let's, not, let's not go too fast, you know. Let's, um, let's, I'll meet you the week after. Uh, I was meeting my brother Dion, went out to dinner together, went out to eat together on, on Friday and spent some time together and, you know. Hey, Bible, but Sister Tash, if any man be found in a fault, let those who are spiritual do what? Restore him, restore him. And tell him what God needs him to do and restore him. And he, uh, we're, we're all very proud of Dion. We want to see Dion go the right way. And, um, and no one's trying to keep you from your wife, from your, no one's trying to, from your mother's children, no one's trying to keep you. But God's rules cannot be bent. They, no one's trying to keep, but God's rules are his rules. And we will uphold them. We will not compromise them or else forget the church. Go play basketball. Go get a coaching job somewhere in America, Robert. You're not fit. No, I'm, go get a coaching. I can go get a coaching job somewhere and start off and make my way up, start a career. You know, I'm still young enough to make to be a coach, you know. And, um, but if you're going to preach and you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna pastor a church, do it properly. Do it properly. Everybody, everybody understands that um, it's what God requires of us. And when we do that, God's pleased. Romans chapter 11 and verses 1. 
We saw a bunch of bombs fly in the sky and it landed in Israel. We saw the party goers get kidnapped and captured and killed. We saw the terror, we saw the pain, we saw the crying. And someone says, yeah, but did you see the, pal did you see the Palestinians pain and crying? <laughs> Not my point. My Bible says, I say then, has God cast away his people? Has God cast away Israel? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. My brother Darian, why not turn that off there? God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Did you not know what the scripture saith of Elias? How we make it intercession against Israel and said, Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have digged down your altars and I am left alone and they seek my life. What say the, what say the answer of God unto him? I have reserved unto myself 7,000 men which have not bowed their knees to the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time, there is also a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace it is no more of works, otherwise grace would no more be grace. Going down to verses um, 8. Verses 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. As, as it is written, God hath given them a spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear. Unto, not to that, unto this day, unto this day, that is still there. Unto this day. And David said, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling, and a recompense, as a, as a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may now see and bow their back, away, uh, their back away. I say then, as, have they stumbled that they should fall? Here's my point. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Same question. He said, I acknowledge certain things about Israel. Has God cast them away? No, he hasn't. Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, is come unto the Gentiles so there is a permanent fall which you don't get up from and there is a fall the Bible says the righteous man falls down seven times but God lifts him up there's a, there's a fall where God lifts you up have they stumbled that they should fall permanently is what he's saying God forbid no no they're not but rather they but 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 rather through their fall temporary through their fall salvation has come to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. God not done yet. For if the fall of them, hear me, for if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak of the Gentiles inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke emulation, them which are my flesh, he says this, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. What? Who? 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 The Jews, those people that are fighting the war and making all kinds of trouble. And if the, casting of, if the casting away of those people is the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? As we go on, we see that God has a, he has something in store for Israel. It's, it's not full and finished. And when you see all the bombs flying in the sky, and I'm not preaching on that specifically, but I must comment on it because it, uh, it helps to establish the point I'm trying to make this, uh, this morning. 
When you see all the bombs, and they're real bombs, they're real buildings, they're real people dying there. There, there are, there are, there's a real war going on. But I want anybody to understand something. The message is called "Back to Jewish." Everybody say "Back to Jewish." God will go back to Jewish. And because I know that God will go back to Jewish, I must go back to Jewish as well. I'll show what I mean by that. God shall, it, sa it says, God shall bring them back and he shall go back to them. And they shall look upon his hands and say, what are these wounds in your hands? And he shall say unto them, these are the wounds with which I was, I was pierced in the, in the house of my friends. There is, there is a principle where God says, Gentiles, you have a time period. Hey, Jamaican man, yeah, boy, you have a, you have a time period. And you all say, hey, Jamaican man, it done now. <laughs> we don't say it is finished. We say it done now, man. It done, Look at, make it done now. It's finished. It is, we say it is finished. It is finished. We have a time period. And when this time period ends, the Bible says God goes back to Jewish. It's in your scripture. Remember the 144,000? Yeah, remember the church is gone? After the church is gone, he does what? He seals the 144,000. What does God do? God goes back to Jewish. It's a principle. It's just, it's just, get used to it. He's going to go back to Jewish. If God's mind and if God's heart and if all God's thoughts and everything God's ordained is taking him back to Jewish, it ought not be offensive unto anybody who is here to also go back to Jewish as well. In fact, you'd find it beneficial if you did, and spiritual if you did, very helpful if you did. You see, when I look at the current situation that's going on in Palestine and in Gaza, in Israel right now, and I see the wars that, that, are, that are there, I, I'm not fooled. I don't let the news media or anybody else influence me. I don't need to watch any particular station or read anything about it, and I have not. Before God, I have not uh, looked it within, with, with two, I just know it happened and that was it. When I look at the situation, I see what they're arguing for. We want this, we want this, you've taken away that, taken away that, and now you've shoved us up against the ocean in Egypt and we have nowhere, there's only a small corridor to go down. We're, we're trapped in here, and, 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 you, and you Jewish people, you're pushing us and squeezing us uh, to a point where we can no longer remain under your oppression. And in order to liberate ourselves, we will fight for our freedom. But I want to let everybody here know today that the original owners of that land, if you go back to Jewish, was not Jews. They were the Palestinians. They used to be called the Philistines. They occupied that place. They owned it. They are the original owners. Well, let's see that. Go back to Jewish. Israel wasn't even around when the Palestinians were already there. The Canaanites were living that land long before they were there. But who owns land? God owns it. God says, I divide, I, I do what I want. Isn't, isn't it God? They are the original owners. They are the original owners. But God said, I'm going to take that piece. God said to the people of that, or the, the, the aboriginal people of that, the word aboriginal means what? native people to that place. They're the, they're the aboriginal people of that place. They are the native people of that place. For their wickedness that they were doing in that land, God said before Israel was even a people, God said to Abraham, I'm going to give you a land because God already see, I see what they're doing in that land. I see their evil. And I am going to disinherit them and I'm going to take it from them and I'm going to give it to another people called the Jewish people. So when Israel went into Palestine, or it was, it was not their land originally. But God had told Abraham, he said, I want you to walk up and down. And everywhere that you are walking is going to be yours. 
I will allow another nation to occupy it for a time. God said they built houses. They built cities. They built great metropolis in, in that place. Uh, that's Alex, Alex, your daughter. Everybody, that gave her a hand clap. Yay. Love it. Every time she does everything, I, I heard a baby screaming, like, oh, who's screaming? It's like, oh, it's her. Yeah, scream on, girl, go on. <laughs> that's, that's the one we shall, we shall put up. As your children, we shall put up with them. But they had built everything. God said, when you go into Palestine and you go take their, their, their land, Egypt, uh, you know, Israel was living in Egypt. They were not in Palestine. And the Palestinians were there in their time. And God said, I'm going to take you out of Egypt and I'm going to send you into their land. Houses are already built. Bakeries already established. Fields are already planted. Orchards already established. And God said, I'm going to disinherit them. Why? For their wickedness and their sins. And God said in the law of Moses, he said, Moses, the people of the land that you're going to, here are all the sins that they're committing. I am not taking their land. I'm going back to Jewish. I am not taking their land because you're better than them. I'm taking their land because it's a punishment for their sins. I am taking it from them. And so he took it. And Israel overcame it and everyone that fought failed because no one could fight Israel and God put the fear of everybody around God put the fear of, of Israel around for every, all the nations were terrified nobody would come and fight against Israel because they knew the God of that land was too great they could not fight against them and so for hundreds and hundreds of years they lived there and they stayed there but every time they sinned Every time they sinned in the book of Judges, what did God do? He kicked them out. Then they prayed, he brought them back. They sinned, he kicked them out. Then they prayed, he brought them back. Then they sinned, he, every, every single time. That's what, all you kept on seeing was they sinned in God. And it's back and forth all the time. Well, if you have a house and you keep moving out of the house all the time, eventually somebody's going to say, I own it. And so the, 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 the Jews began to do, the Bible said they began to do more wickedly than the people of the land. And God had told Israel, he said, if you sin, I will disinherit you from this land, which he did. I will take the land for you. I will make it barren. I will make it dry. I will not make it fruitful, which it's not. Or I should say, it wasn't. And so we see them going into, into Babylonian captivity. For their punishment. 70 years God said let the land rest. And during that, and during that time, guess what? Nobody took it over. And after a certain period of I'm just going back to Jewish. After a certain period of time, the great King Darius and Cyrus, they came along and said, Israel, Jewish people, your 70 years for all the Sabbaths you broke, they're over. God said, God said, I am sending you by decree. By decree, God said, you read it in your Bible. I had taken you out of the land. But after you served a period of punishment, by decree, I anointed a heathen king and he sent you back in there, Darius did. We read it in our Bible and I read it because I, they, I went back to Jewish. So I know they lost it, but I know God gave it back to them. And when they lost it, God made it a wilderness and a, and a place for dragons and howls and for wild creatures and nobody took it over. Now when they went back, they went back with blessings and provisions by the king to take that piece of land again. But it was originally not their land, it was the Philistines, it was the Palestinians people. I call them the Philistines. It was the Palestinians. Y'all get it right if you're going back in your scripture. Y'all get your arguments right. And after a long period of time when, when the Jews had been disinherited, for they, trans for they transgressed against God, God destroyed their temple. Without their temple, there was no priesthood. Without their priesthood, sin increases. As sin increased, they were abandoned. God destroyed them from the land again. 
And they went all over the place and God sent them and God said, Israel will not sin in this place here. For the land that you are staying is the holy ground. You're not going to sit in this place. I, won't, I, I, I have made a promise unto myself. I will not break it. If Israel sins in this place I, and do not repent, I will disinherit them from this land. So they were disinherited. In the midst of their persecution, World War II came along. Hitler came along. They began to die by the millions. I'm just going back to Jewish. In my Bible, I don't see anywhere where God says, hey, listen, in this year, I'm going to give you back your land. Never said that. In that year, never said that. But along the way, in the midst of their persecution, they remembered Zion. They remembered, they remembered their land. And the British government and other Democratic country said, go back. Here's some guns. Fight for it. War for it. Kill for it. The first time they got it, God told them to execute judgment. God said, do this. Did they, am I right or wrong? When the Babylonians took it, he sent, he, 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 he sent them back. But when they got it this time, they fought for it, and they fought for it with guns and bombs. God gave them it the first time. God gave them it the second time. God gave them it the third time. In each of their, when, they, uh, when the media Persian Empire took them away, and they brought them back again, they kept on going. But this time, when they got it, they got it by war, by force, and they did not get it by what we call Jewish. I don't find it written. You see, they should have been there the whole time. They should have been serving Yahweh the whole time. They should have been glorifying Yahweh the whole time. They should have believed Jesus the whole time. They should have accepted their Messiah the whole time. They should have drawn nigh unto God the whole time, but they did not. They went upon the, 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 the circumference of the earth. They went all over it, and they, and, and they moved here and moved there. Everywhere was better. And God said, yeah, you leave and you leave. You to there. You and, he, and he put all the tribes of Israel everywhere around the world. They, un, until they did not know who they were. That's not even the source of my... When Israel began to, to form as a nation, and I think it was like 1987, 1988, one of the largest mass immigration of people by, from one country to another country actually happened in Israel. There's a, a group of people in Africa, in Ethiopia, who are called the Falashians. The Falashians, in Ethiopia, in the Falashians. And when Israel could not know who was who, they met these people, black as me. And, and they said, you know what? I know we, we, we look more Middle Eastern, but you guys have our book, you guys have our... And they were bringing all the Jews, as many Jews as they could, back to Israel. And they didn't care about the color of your skin as long as you had your Hebrew past. And these people were following their law so closely that they bust and ship go look it up go look it up what they did they took all the Falashian Jews away from Ethiopia brought them into Israel gave them land gave them this they gave them all those things because they're trying to put it back together again and they got it back together again but they got they got it because of war now if you get something by force and by war what do you expect it's always gonna be force and war until Jesus steps out of heaven and God comes down from heaven upon a white horse, there shall always be war. For you got it by war. When I gave it to you and when God gave it to you, you had, you had peace and there was no, and there was a blessing everywhere. King Solomon built the temple and God said he gave him peace on all of his neighbors around. God said, I gave them peace and no one fought Solomon in the time that I gave them peace. No one rose up against them because I was given to them. I was establishing my temple and my people and my priesthood there. But when they got it by war, you'll keep it by war. If you get it by God, then yeah, you can, you can go to bed, you can go to bed in peace. 
What did you, hey, Pastor Robert, what did you just do? I just went back to Jewish. I don't have to go to the news. I don't have to go to any, any history lesson. I just went back to Jewish. I can understand from the Bible. You may have your opinion. I'm not saying you can't have your opinion. But when I went back to Jewish, my Bible said that land belonged to the Palestinian people. My Bible said that. It was their land. But my Bible said God took it. And my Bible said God gave it to the Jews. But the Jews did evil like they did, and God kicked them out of there as well. And when they were kicked out, they of themselves, uh, it, it was time, and they went and they fought and they got the land, and therefore they shall be fighting until the Prince of Peace brings peace. Do you think that when Christ is sitting in Jerusalem, for shall not Christ return again? And shall he not go to Jerusalem? Shall he not reign from Jerusalem in the, in the 1,000 years? It says in your Bible that he shall. He's going to go to this Jerusalem and he's going to dwell in Jerusalem and all the nation. And there shall not be one man or anyone that shall raise a finger because he shall rule them with a rod of iron. There shall be no war then. And the devil shall be silenced then. For he wants Jerusalem as well. I'm just going back to Jewish. You see, when I talk about going back to Jewish, and you, you need to have what this, this book that's, that's called the Torah. But more, more definitively, you need a book that's called the Tanakh. When, when you go back to Jewish, you you got to go back to the original scriptures that was there You see when our Bible is written our Bible has Malachi as the last book The Tanakh does not It has second Chronicles as the last book the book of Chronicles as the last book it has a different setup and the Tanakh is right because the book of Malachi is written in 430. Which means that it's a lot older than the book of Chronicles, which is written 250. Almost 200 years more. It's almost 200 years older. But every time I read my Bible, I go Malachi, and then after Malachi, they were silent. No, it's not true. Malachi is a lot older than the last book of the Bible. Don't think it was written chronologically. So, when, so when, I, when you talk about going back to Jewish, you have to understand how, did, how was that Jewish book organized? It's called the Tanakh because it's the T-E, it stands for the, the book of Moses, the Torah. The, the N-A stands for what's called the Nevi'im, which are the, the books of the prophets. So Malachi is a prophet. So you've got the Torah, which is the first five books. You've got the Nevi'im, which are the, the, books of the, um, uh, the books of the prophets, uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah. You ever notice when you're in, you're, in, you're in your Bible, the book of Ruth is in this really weird spot? You wonder, where did where that, where that come from? Why is it there? Well, it's not supposed to be there. In the Tanakh, it's not there. It's, it's later on. But the way it was organized by the, those that canonized the Old Testament, they, they put it there. I'm just, I'm just going back to Jewish for a bit. Then you have what's called the Ketuvim. And the Ketuvim are all the writings that were, that were, that were given. That includes all those books that, yeah, um, the book of Ruth, the book of this, the book of that. They're all in the Ketuvim. So you have the, uh, you've got the Torah, which is Moses. You've got the Nevi'im, which is um, the, 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 the prophets. And then you've got the, um, the Ketuvim, which are, which are the writings, which are the book of Ruth and different things that you, that you see in the scriptures there. The writings, the chronicles and kings and that sort of stuff like that. Histories of, of, of Israel. So, you have to understand that you as Gentile people, you've been engrafted into something that you really should know about. You've been, you've been grafted into something that God does not want you to forget. And he, God's expecting you as Gentiles to look at your Old Testament but know that the Old Testament is built upon 
the foundation of the prophets, the Nevi'im. It's built upon, Moses also being a prophet, uh, it's built upon the Nevi'im. It's also built upon the book of Psalms. David also being a prophet, it's built upon the Nevi'im. It's built upon those prophets. When you're interpreting scripture, and you're, and, you're, and, you're, and you're looking in the word of God, you, listen to me now, you do not step outside of scripture. If you want to understand history, don't, don't trip me, do not trip me. All right, everyone, take this around, I'm gonna fall. I'm six foot five, Brother George, be, be awful, be awful. When you're, when you're looking in, in, in the scripture, you have to understand what the Jewish book is saying. You have to look back at the Jewish book and say, how do I understand everything from the Jewish perspective. Uh, everybody here needs to understand. If it's not coming from the Jewish perspective, it's wrong. If it's not coming out of the Tanakh, it's wrong. I say to you before God, if it's not coming out of Israel, it's wrong. What did Jesus Christ come out of? Who told us that God created us? The Jews. Whatever understanding we have, who told you of angels? The Jews. Who told you of heaven and hell? It was, it was the Jews. Everything that we have and we have, we have been engrafted on, we have gotten from, we have gotten those things from the Jewish scriptures, from the Tanakh. We have gotten it from their word. Therefore, we ought to go back to it when we're reading the word. I was watching a pastor, he's preaching recently. Can we turn to Psalm 23? Let me show you what I mean. <laughs> hey Tammy, can you can you um, find where the where the spies were sent out? And John began and where the spies were sent out, the the spies came back. Find one for me, thank you. Where am I going? Psalm twenty three. Thank you. Psalm 23 appears in our Bible. Psalm 23 appears uh, before all the prophets. In the Tanakh, it does not. It appears after. It's in the wrong spot, but that's okay. As long as it's there, I can make sense of it. I just thought I should let you know that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me, that rod and the staff, they comfort me. Watch verses 5. What does that mean? Wait, 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 wait. You have to go back to the Jewish. Before you give an answer, go back to the Jewish. I won't let you answer. Let me spare you for a minute. For I heard a, a man that was preaching, and the man said, The Lord, <laughs> which ought to show you that <laughs> does not mean you're telling the truth. <laughs> Brother Abnus? He was, I tell ya, the Lord now. <laughs> he said, the Lord, he said, I, I know what he's imagining. The Lord shall make a table in front of my enemies. And God shall put the stake over here. <laughs> Thinking with his tummy, you know. <laughs> he shall put the filet mignon there. He's thinking in the middle of a war, God is going to set a table and put food on the table. And in the middle of the war, he is going to be eating. <laughs> what has he failed to do? He has failed to go back to Jewish. And you see, we as Gentiles, what sounds really right to us, 
God shall make a table before us. It, it means that, well, God's gonna, he's gonna set a table and thou preparest a table before me. When, when a mother or a father in our day and age, when they prepare a table, what do they do? They put food on it. You put the cup there, the dish there. My sister, you cook and you, you know, you got the dessert, over, you got the, the glass over. So we're thinking like Gentiles, but we make mistakes in scripture and it shows you that popular storm Pastors, not just one, many pastors are getting up behind their pulpits and they're saying, hallelujah, God is going to give me a steak. I'm going to eat some caviar. What? To, to a person who's gone back to Jewish, you, you sound ridiculous. You sound foolish and unlearned. So God preparing a table before you has nothing to do with food. What does it mean? Say it again. Okay. So give me. So let's go back to Jewish. And let me show you how much more powerful and truthful the scriptures are. When you said, Tammy, where am I at? He said, the Lord shall make them bread unto us. Joshua, yeah, Joshua, when they came back, when the spies, when the spies came back. Remember when the spies came back? Let's, let's see, let's see what he meant. Who's going to find this for me? When the spies came back from all the twelve, they began to, they began to murmur and they began to, they began to weep before him. Who is with me on that one? Where, where am I at? Talk to me, somebody. Don't leave me alone. Help. <laughs> Who's got my scripture for me today? Brother Benny. Huh? Numbers? 14.9? I'll try that one. Let's try Numbers, let's try Numbers 14 and verses 9. 14 and verses 9. Look what he says. That sounds right. Numbers 14. Yeah, that's the one. First of all, listen to what they say. Listen, listen. <laughs> If you're a prey, what does a, what does a, what's a prey? P-R-E-Y. What's a prey? Uh, your food. I mean, they, if you're a prey, they eat you. You're, you're, a prey is the food for the predator. Listen to this. Listen to how, when you go back to the Jewish, how much more sense it makes. Listen to this. So when they came back, they had a bad report. Verses, verses 1, 14, 1. And all the congregation of Israel lifted up their voice and cried. <laughs> and the people wept all night. Shh. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would to God we had died in the land of Egypt. Or, that, or would to God we had died in the wilderness. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land? To fall by the sword, that our wives and children should be prey? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a, let us make a captain, let us go back to Egypt. And Moses and Aaron fell upon their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, and Joshua and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Jephune, which were of them, and searched the land, rent their clothes, listen to me, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. Were there people living there? 
So you can't say it wasn't their land. They, they, were, they were there. They were there. It was their land. But he said, God shall give it to us. And the victory that we, the wars we fight were sanctioned by God. And the victories were given by God. Not America, not Britain. He says this, if the Lord enlighten us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither, and neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are, they are bread for us. They are bread. What do you do with bread? You eat it. <laughs> you eat it. When you have bread, you do what? You take the bread and you eat the bread. Now listen to me. Little mystery here. The Bible talks about the devouring sword. When you devour, you eat something. All it's, all it's saying is that my sword, when I see a thousand, remember, remember Samson? Yeah. Samson took a jawbone of a donkey and he went and they were bred to him, bred to a jaw, and with the jaw, not even a sword, with the jawbone he smote and he, and he smote a thousand people. They were bred. He devoured, he destroyed, he killed them. Understand? He, destroyed, he devoured and destroyed them. They were bred unto him. They didn't exist anymore. Brother George, when your wife makes a nice soup for you and she makes nice food for you, give us a day our daily. But yet that's what we eat. It's the same connotation, except it's talking about in war. It's called going back to Jewish. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, keep. Christian, Christian, a minister must not make such an error. A pastor must not make such mistakes. Because you're dealing with the souls of men. And if you can make that kind of error, and you can misinterpret the Bible, that badly and be going hallelujah <laughs> if you can act anointed and be saying I'm gonna be eating steak when my enemies come against me God is gonna give me some steak if you can make that kind of mistake from a pulpit under the anointing imagine what other mistakes you're making because what? You're failing to go back to Jewish. And any Christian who was thinking that, stop it. In my church, don't think like that. Because we have enough of the Holy Ghost to tell us what to do. You have to be brilliant, but you don't go outside of Scripture. Where in the Bible does anybody get a table set in front of their enemies? Where does anybody, anybody eat steak and, and lamb roast and chicken and chips? Where? Where does anybody eat Kentucky in front of their enemy? In case you all can't relate, because I'm talking, you know? Where? Not there. But what do they do? They destroy them. Easy. As easily as we destroy our food when we're hungry. Jaron, Jaron came from, um, uh, Jaron came from, they went to Rottenest Island yesterday. Came back, he was hungry. <laughs> eh? Ah. He's a big boy now, you know? Jermaine uh, called me up, Dad? Yeah, Rottenest was rough, man. I'm hungry. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Do what? Do what? Yeah. Prepare a table. Now, you see, when, when my boy called me up and he says that, I'm like, Tammy, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> hey, the kings are coming home. We got we to gotta, we gotta cook for them. <laughs> and so I cooked and I cooked and made whatever meal you wanted, I made them their meal. And Jaron went and he, they stuffed their, and they ate. I, and, well, you know, I don't think any food came back. Any food came back out of the room? You know why? You know why? You devoured it. I set the table and they devoured it. But that does, that's not what David is talking about. Okay. Just hang me for a while. When determining the nature of God and the relationship between God and Christ, the early Catholic fathers we're supposed to do what? They were just as how you can see the error. Just as how you can see the error of, of, of that. And, and, and by the way, guys, you can look through the scripture, you find more in the mouth of two or three witnesses. You can feel where it says bread, it's bread. There should be bread, there should be pray. It says what? Yes, read it. The feast. 
Yes, he says, come and, come and eat the flesh of kings. Can you read that for me, please? You know why? Because I'm a pastor. If I give an interpretation, I must give you the scripture for it. And you're not to believe me if I just give you one. That's why I said give him two. Go ahead, Brother Regan. Yep. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Stop! Blessed are they who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. What do you expect at the marriage supper of the Lamb? Feasting. Eh? You know what, guys? I, I keep segueing into our. When we build our new church, someone's going to get married there first. I don't know who it is. But someone is going to get married there. Someone's going to get, somebody got to get married there first. Eh? And we want to have the tables set so beautifully. Eh? We want to have, a, we want to, if you want a cheap wedding, you could just get married at your church that you paid for. If you pay, if you haven't paid for it, don't get married there. <laughs> don't ask me. I'm not going to give you permission. <laughs> I have, I have the records, you know, I'll go back and, no, 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 you can only come on Sunday and Tuesday, that's the free days. <laughs> the other days, don't, I'm serious, don't come, don't come. <laughs> Sister Hawa, because it, poor single mothers, the, did you pay for the church, Sister Hawa? Sure. Yes, I think you did, Sister Hawa, yes, she did. It is, it is, it is, it is meant for that, guys. I, I, I would like to see your son, when he's going to get married one day. He comes along and says, Mom, you know what, let's know. We've got a nice building here. We've got our, our saints here. Let's have this. And we, he gets married there. And we have a beautiful gardens and we have everything made for him. Potato There's potato leaf. <laughs> <laughs> it, brother, brother. She, I, I'm, I, just, I, need, I need five minutes. I need five minutes. <laughs> just bear with me, please. I, I'm not trying to be... Sister Fatmala said there will be potato leaves. <laughs> That's because she got potato leaves. But I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell it. Sister Adama, all the leaves were taken off the potato stick. Well, the sticks died. The only one that was left was, Brother Sister Belinda, the six all died? Wait till the hot weather next week, they'll be dead for sure. Is the one with the one leaf, is that leaf still? There was one leaf. <laughs> you got some? Can you leave some leaves on there, please? Hey. Do it, okay, yeah, yeah we. We need to, but let me, let me finish it. I didn't, no, I was right. <laughs> listen, listen. I watered, I watered, I watered. There was no, no potato leaves. You need to start over. I, I want leaves on my potato leaves. Okay. I want. Get some All right. I need leaves. <laughs> I watered the stick. I watered, the, I watered the stick. They died. They all died there. But <laughs> we will. Belinda, there's hope. <laughs> there's hope. But I want to I, I wanna see your son, my, my sister. I come and we set the table, we pick the leaves because there's something that's grown and, and, and we have a beautiful meal and we have a, you know, set that table. So when you hear the marriage supper, the marriage supper is always consuming of food. The wedding that Jesus went to, they consumed and they ate food. But, in your Bible, listen to what the marriage supper sounds like. Shh. Hear this. Go ahead, brother. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, wait, 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 wait. See if we're learning something here. See if we're looking at me like, 
Sifa, the marriage supper of the Lamb is not nice fine glass in China and food. Are you finding that out right now, are you? Welcome to Zion. We've gone back to Jewish. It means destruction. It means devouring sword. And the marriage supper is where or every devil and everyone who has fought against the church, now the church fights against them. And every devil that has fought against the church, now the church fights against them. And the angel of God fight against them. And the, and the God himself fights against them. And he devours them and gives their flesh to the birds. Read it on, my brother. Is that, was that it? He said, come and eat, come and eat, the, come and eat the flesh of kings and, and captain and chief. Come and eat. That's the marriage supper. So you understand what it is. Now, with that revelation, now you understand what so many people are like, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. <laughs> and my sister, good to see you in church. You came to church with mom. Very good. I'm at the marriage supper of the Lamb, having a banquet, and they all, no, 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 no. It's a sword. It's death and devouring. But anyway, you learn. This is Zion. You learn here. So where am I now? So when the Catholic Church was determining the Godhead, or what we call the, the relationship between God and Christ, uh, instead of going back to Jewish, they went back to philosophy, back to Hebrew. I mean, back to Greek. Why aren't you going back to Jewish? We can't make a mistake if we go to Jewish. We cannot. Are you, are you, are you talking? Are you, are you trying to preach? You can ignore me for now. Ignore me for now. She ignores me. But that's okay. She'll be my friend one day. I have, I have a feeling. Some hope. You've got to go back into, you got to go back into Jewish, not into Greek. They went into Greek and out of the Greek, they got plurality in God. They said God is three separate persons. How is that? Out of it, they say, we, we have a baptism, a baptism in the name of the Father and the Holy Ghost. Go back in Jewish. Go back in Jewish and see. Can, can, we, go to, can we go to Isaiah 9 in the Tanakh? When you go back into it, you've, now, you've gone back into the Tanakh. Listen to this, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, listen to this. Isaiah 9 and verse 6. My mom greets the church, by the way. Everybody say, hi, Sister Rose. Hi, Sister Rose. She watches the service. And, it, and she's, she can't go to church as much anymore because she's older now. And, you know, she's older. Sister Karina, you told me you were having a girl. My mom was dying. She heard me begging God for a girl like Sister Karina. And she was cracking up, laughing. So, Bethany, mom said you better have a girl. So... But you know, I said, Mom, you're old now and I'm preaching to you when you, you preach me in to the church. You know, you, I'm preaching you out and she's, she's enjoying it. I, I like the fact that she does that. What a blessing. What a blessing. She goes listen to me and say, oh, Rob, that's horrible. You can't preach. <laughs> she goes, no, no, no. If it, was, if it was bad, I'd tell you, you can't preach. But she seems to enjoy it. And I'm not trying to be wild. I'm just trying to edify your mind. Okay. Ryan, Isaiah 9, verse 6, thank you, right in front of me. Listen to this, listen to this. Jesus says, go ye into all the world, go ye into all the world and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. To understand what that means, don't look around, don't go, you, to understand what that means, what must you do? You've got to go to the Jewish. It's salvation is from the Jews. You, you'll make mistakes if you don't do that and think, hallelujah, you're eating filet mignon, but you're not. You made a mistake. Listen to this. Just give, bear me for two seconds. I'll be quick. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. In, when I go back in the Tanakh, the Tanakh prophesied or the, the, the prophets and their, and their declaration, they said, there's gonna come a boy who is a son and a king, the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the? He's a son, but he's also 
Father. He was born, but he's also God. <laughs> you know when you're born, you're weak and frail, but you're still God. Long before Jesus said, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Jewish scriptures, the Jewish scriptures already had that worked out for us. We don't have to wonder what he means or, or make mistakes because we, now, I ask you a question. For unto us a child is born, son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Who is that? Who is that? Jesus. So before, he didn't, have to, he, he didn't have to say, go and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He could have just said, go and baptize on, in the name of the child that is to be born, the son that is to be given, upon whose shoulder the government shall be, whose name is Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He could have said that. But that reference is referring back to here. And I can go deeper, but... You can't make a mistake. So we know his name is Jesus. The Jews who heard him went back to Judaism. They went back to the Jewish. And when they went back to Jewish, they said that name is Jesus. And so in the scriptures, because they went back to Jewish, they always baptized in the name of Jesus. For the prophecy about Jesus said that he is son, father, and God who is spirit. God is a spirit. The mighty God is a spirit. It's go, go and baptize. Is that Tashi? And you open up their understanding, they may understand the Jewish. Because unless you understand the Jewish, you don't know anything. So when the Catholic Church came around and the Catholic Church saw that scripture, they said, let's interpret that for everybody. Should we go back to the Jewish? No. We're going to go to our philosophy. And so they made it so everyone that got baptized were being baptized into the Trinity. That's the truth. I'm not saying it. Just go in Encyclopedia Britannica, type in the word baptism and see. It says, baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is a baptism into the Trinity. Baptism in the name of Jesus is a baptism into the prophecy of the Jews. It says it. I can't make a mistake because you can actually type it in, look up baptism, and it'll tell you. Someone made a massive mistake. You need to correct it. That's what Zion is for. You need to correct it. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Listen. It says this. The, the everlasting of the, the Prince of Peace, and that, that's who Jesus Christ is. I'll give you one last one. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19. I, I could, you know, about says if a man leaves his wife for the sake of fornication. Oh, listen, listen, oh, listen, to this, listen to this, listen to this. Here's why you can't make a mistake. <laughs> brother Dion, here I'm going to give you one like I. It's okay, brother. You know I love you. I'm going to give you one, one like I warn every other man. Every every man who's ever come to this church, I gave him this warning. Is there anybody here in this church who I have not given this warning to? I always say, I don't care what your mother says, I don't care what your father says, sister, brother, anybody says. When you marry her, you're bound to her forever. If she leaves you, you're stuck. Is there anybody that I didn't give that warning to when they got married? <laughs> I tell everybody that, right? Okay, so I, I, I make sure I'm clear myself before God. I always tell everybody, I don't care what anyone thinks, you're making a choice now because I'm letting you know, I'm going to bind you to that choice of that person. Not me, I'm not making a choice, you're making a choice yourself. But I'm going to hold you to that choice, I don't care what anyone says. Listen to this, here's why I give that warning. Verse 7, they say unto him, why did Moses give them a, a writing give them a, a writing of the say command to give them a writing of, of divorce and to put her away put away means divorce what we call put away it means divorce right this is what he says there a writing of divorce and to put her away Shh. he said to them moses because of the hardness of your hearts allowed you 
to put away or divorce your wives. Husbands, you're not allowed to divorce your wife. But from the beginning, it was not so. What does he say from the beginning? It's a Jewish who, who told what the beginning was. From the beginning, it was not so. There was no divorce, as we said last week. Listen to me. Our church is not being tough. Our church is being biblical. Listen to what I'm saying. He says this to a, hey, to a man. Women could not put away their husband. Now they can. But a woman could not put away her husband. And it was only the man that can put away her husband. Put away his wife. But now the wife can put away her husband. Tamara, if you divorce me and I fall into sin, guess whose fault it is? Yours. Oh yeah. If you divorce me and I fall into sin, you have not escaped. God made sure of that. And every man who divorces his wife and marries another woman, if she falls into sin, it's your fault. So, but they have this, uh, God forbid, you want to decide, I'm sick of this girl, she can't cook like I wanted to cook. And you divorce her. I'm tired of kebabs. Uh, <laughs> don't, say, don't go there. <laughs> That's sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Thank you, sir. Uh, you, you get rid of her. And then 10 years, she waits 10 years. She waits 15 years. She waits 20 years. You're not coming back. And she goes and gets married again? Or she goes and gets herself a boyfriend and it's your fault? Always your fault. <laughs> Michael, your, your wife is laughing loud, bro. <laughs> It's, your, it's always, it's, we are men, it's always our faults. Learn to manage her, learn. She's difficult, she's a bit cray cray, that's okay, learn. Am I right with that? I'm okay with that? Oh sorry, the Bible says she's the weaker vessel. Doesn't say cray cray, I shouldn't say cray cray. She's the weaker vessel, yeah. Learn how to manage her. But you get rid of her, it's your fault. Listen to this. Whosoever shall divorce his wife, except it be for fornication. Oh no. Oh, we are. It's, it's so deep, I can't, but I, I got to go back to the Jewish. Hey guys, listen to me just quick here. In a Jewish marriage, there were three parts. There was the betrothal, where you're engaged. An engagement under the Jewish system was binding. You engage a girl, you had to write a letter to divorce her. You didn't just put a ring on her finger and when you're not happy, you take it back. You couldn't take it back. How many guys got engaged to a girl and took the ring back? Many. In Judaism, you couldn't do that. Christ is not talking about Gentile way of doing things. He's talking about the Jewish way of things. But if you're engaged to her and she's wearing your ring, you're betrothed to her and you have not yet come together as man and wife, you've not yet gone to the ceremony of the marriage supper and the, you know, and you find out that she, she cheated on you, God said, you can break that one. Why would you bind yourself forever permanently when, when she's already done that? Don't do it. Don't go to her. Leave her alone. So, pastors today are not going back to the Jewish. They're saying, well, you know, your wife, who you did the wrong thing and made her, and, and, and because you're supposed to take every blame. Brother, Brother Athens, you're a good husband because you understand it. Tash, don't make his life hard. Come on, man. Michael, you understand it? Don't make her, don't make, don't make, uh, sister, don't make his life hard. It's hard enough. Hey, it's all, it's all yours, it's my fault. Everything's my fault. Tamara, Tamara, don't make my life hard, okay? I have, a, I have enough burden. Why would she do that? Why would you make my life hard? If you know that God is putting all the burden on my head, if you know that God's making everything, why are you doing anything to make my life harder? Help me, not make it harder. Bethany, 
Oh yeah. Oh, help your husband. Don't make it harder. Oh, you are. Oh, sister, I am doing that. Sister Trish, help him. Don't make it harder for him. He has enough burden. He has to carry everything. That's his job. Dom, carry it, son. Brooke, make it easy for him. Yes, sir. If you're married, it's adultery, but fornication means you've not consummated the marriage by coming together, you've not gone through the ritual, you've not exchanged your ID. All you've done was engage her. God said, if she cheats on you at that point, you can, you can let it go. But once you've gone through the betrothal, and you've gone through the nuptials, which is the marriage, and you've gone through the uh, consummation, which is the coming together as man and wife, that's Jewish. Hey, pastors who say, oh yeah, well, you know, she's got a new man now, you're free. They're sending you to hell. A pastor who says, well, she's got a new man now, so you're free, is sending you to hell. Welcome to Zion. You are stuck in that state until he dies, until she dies. Because the covenant is unto death. Unless you don't care. But then don't make the covenant, go do whatever you want to do. Don't act like you care about God but when, you, when you go into your nuptials, that's all pretty and everything, and then when you want to just break it off. What nonsense is that? Yeah, don't come in and say, I, I, I made a mistake. Woe to the man who leaves his wife and go and marry somebody else. You're going to hell. Woe to the man who leaves his wife and go and marry somebody else. You're going to go to hell. You, you hear that's the message from this pulpit. You better, you better stay with her. I don't, Oh, no, no, no. They just, they, just, they just say sexual immorality. Yeah. They just say any, which could be anything. Yeah. They, they, NIV, just sexual immorality. Now, you need to get specific on what, because the Jewish is very specific between fornication and adultery. The Jewish is very specific between fornication and adultery. The Jewish is. When Christ is on the earth, he is referring to the Jewish, which is specific to that before you're married. That's why the Bible says, Joseph was going to put away his wife, though they were not married yet. She was only betrothed to him. Is that what the Bible says? Okay. Now we understand. Go tell some pastors who are behind pulpits preaching, hallelujah, under the anointing and sending their members to hell. This is not that church. You're stuck. Brother Alex, tell me if I'm right or wrong. When you came to church here, you gave up on your marriage, right? You were done, quit, finished, over. Thank God for Brother Soren. Brother Soren, you rescued him. He was finished, done. He's ready to go. And he came, he's like, what? They're like, no, you can't get rid of her. You're stuck forever for life. Ah! <laughs> I said you're stuck for life. You, you, that's, how many years ago? Five years ago? Eight years ago, wow, yeah. You're really stuck, eh? <laughs> And he said, yeah, I'm stuck. I said, yeah, turn here, turn here, turn here. But, but nobody else preaches I'm stuck. Yeah, you're stuck. I don't care how bad she is. You're stuck. Find a way to love her and make a way through. And please don't make his life hard because God will judge you for that. Don't make his life hard. Oh, by the way, this is sinful. This is not Jewish. Treat him mean. Keep him keen. That's not Jewish. Thank you, Valerie. That's not Jewish. Treat him mean, keep him keen is ungodly. It's sinful. It's not, it's not Jewish. You don't know it? Okay. It means treat the man mean. And if you treat him mean, then you'll just like be your puppy dog. <laughs> Brother Abnus, I'm rebellious. Treat me mean, I'm going to be mean. You ain't going to get... I, I, you can't treat me mean. Eh? Not a level. We have levels. But my wife, I'm, I'm done. My brother George, brother George, my wife is so sweet. <laughs> Preach it, young lady. <laughs> I want to I say hallelujah. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> we love it. We love it. My, my, my brother, my brother. But my wife didn't treat me mean. Some, some of you wives need to learn this. 
She treated me so nice. I found it impossible to be mean. Because she got mean out of the relationship. And I could not justify my meanness because she was so nice. She helped you. So helpful, so sweet, so calm, so passive, so wife-like, so ladylike, so gentle. She was so gentle that it calmed this brute of a man. And I had to just, now I'm running around like... <laughs> <laughs> Tammy, you're fast asleep. I'm washing the dishes. <laughs> that's not for treating me mean. That's from being sweet. I should be a good Christian woman. Hey, a good Christian ladies. Ah, I, I won't work twice as hard. Tammy, you were sleeping this morning. Oh, forgive me. You're sleeping this morning. Yeah. Well, I, I'm making you breakfast. Making the, I have to make her special soup. She gets up. Nine o'clock. She's waking up. You know. She got her breakfast, made she likes her soup in the morning. I make it the way she likes. I put the bowl there. She's the, I'm, I'm, I, love, not treat me mean. You bring a monster out of me, treat me mean. No wonder your marriage, hey, hey, I'm talking, no wonder your marriage is going down the hill because you're treating him mean. You're ungodly, it's not Jewish. It's not Bible, it's not Christian. Treat him nice. Be sweet to him. When he talks his rubbish or you don't agree with something, and be nice about it. Handle it decently. Not with threats and this and that. You're wrecking your marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, let me, I'll move on there. Amen. Let's just rise to our feet. Let's just rise to our feet. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, oh yeah, I want to see you, I want to see you, I am lifted up, shouted in the light of your glory, come on and pour out your power and love, as we sing holy, holy, we want to see you. And just shout it in the light of your glory, oh Lord. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Tam say, oh yeah, come on and open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Here I am, Lord, open. Oh, I want to see you. Yeah, Tam say. to see you someone say I want to see you I want to see you I am lifted up shining in the light of your glory come on and pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 I want to see you see you may I give counsel to you brother Dion make sure the girl you marry gets Christ in her life because it's hard you don't get Christ in her you're almost guaranteed gonna fail even with Christ is hard but at least there's Christ he's there at least Christ can get a word in there sometimes at least they can respect Christ she got to respect Christ or else you call unequally yoked it just makes everything too difficult. But if you, if you move together, you come together, your minds are together, and you're growing in Christ together. When I, was, when I married my wife, I was unequally yoked with her. She was, when I say unequally yoked, she was baptized, but she was not my level. Now she's a pastor's wife. Ask her any mystery, she'll tell you. She can answer any question you have. Because she's my equal, and God made us equals. The living God who made the heaven and the earth, we thank you for all things. Thank you for your word today. We went a little bit long, but for us, extra 15 minutes to you, it's a second. It's nothing whatsoever. 
and the wonderful pleasure that we have this day, God, of hearing your word, of understanding the truth, of understanding where our background is, how we're supposed to interpret the Bible. Too many pastors are sending their congregation. So many churches, Lord, they will not say what your word said. They won't tell people. They're trying to make members on earth in their churches rather than members for heaven. But I'm not trying to make members upon this earth. I'm trying to make members of your body. And in your body, all your members are governed by your word and your word is established by your spirit and by your truth. We can't have lies and have things that are not right in, and, and say it's, it's, it's correct. Your word establishes what we're to believe and accept. And you've told us in your word. So we gotta go back to Jewish. We went, we went back to Jewish for a little bit, Lord. We've learned so much about your principles and your ways. We've gone a little bit deeper in your word. We love your truth. Thank you for the revelation of your under, and understanding that you've given us, your knowledge and the wisdom that you've given unto us, God. Bless this congregation as we go. Many people are in situations, some with their marriages, and we don't know what's happened, Lord. They didn't understand. When, when they didn't understand what was happening, things happened. But now they must understand what your word says. Because it doesn't matter what happened in your relationship, the word does not change. The word remains the same. And that word judges you at the end, whether you did it or you did not do it. But give us the spirit of obedience to understand your truth and to ask you, Lord, what should I do? How am I to walk? What, where am I supposed to go? Than to force ourselves into your kingdom, which we cannot. For it is your kingdom and the door is locked up by your word. For you said, I am the, your, you said, Jesus, the door. You said, I am the door. I am the way. We are bound. We cannot open and enter in where Christ has not given us permission to go in. Where the word did not say we can go in. So we remain bound and we remain in your truth. Help me when I preach, remember, don't use my ideas, even though they're brilliant, but to use the word that you have given unto us. Thank you for this congregation and for all these people and for the blessing. Thank you, Brother Dion. We know the blood is upon him because you put the blood upon him. When we sin, we acknowledge our sin. We come back to you and say, Lord, I sinned. We confess our sins. You are just, you are righteous to forgive us. Let him be sanctified by that blood today as he walks in faith. Keep my knees go, I pray, God. And let him seek your face and draw near to all the congregation, I pray. In Jesus' name. People said amen. 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 amen.